the ball, but this is no game. Okay. Just a gorgeous fall afternoon in the heart of Texas. No weather to speak of. Sun out, roof open. Yes, yes, and yes. A great day for football at AT&T Stadium in Arlington. Obviously, they do everything big here in Dallas. And the introduction to the Cowboys, no exception. They're set for football in Big D as their guys will do battle with the Buffalo Bills. Line of scrimmage, the 31 now on first and 10. Here's the man who's led the league in rushing twice in three seasons, Ezekiel Elliott. Five yards on the game's first play, second down. For Zeke, what a first three years he's had in the NFL. Last year, his second rushing title, 1,434 yards. Not as many as 1,631 that he had as a rookie, but still his yards per game average was the best in the National Football League. On second down, Elliott. And to the 42-yard line here and brought down there. Six yards to pick up, and that's a first down. Boy, he does it at a high level, doesn't he? Because when I watch him, I think of his vision. Straight ahead, peripheral. Also has that sense of where holes are going to be before they actually open. I think that helps set him apart from many of the other backs in the league. Off play action to Elliott. Here's Prescott. And that is incomplete. Took a shot there on first down, but he couldn't reel it in. I know coaches tell us all the time that having a powerful arm isn't the number one thing they look for in a quarterback. But when you're trying to throw inside routes and you need to put some heat on it, it helps to have the big gun. In this case, just a little bit too much. Ball on the 42 as they come up second and 10. They play fake to Elliott. Now Prescott. Into double coverage, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Micah Hyde. And the return here is stopped at the 35-yard line. Cooper was the intended target. They've got good starting field position as they come up here first and 10 at their 35-yard line. A lane opens up that time as he'll be brought down just short of a first after a gain of about nine. A nice run there, nine yards, and it'll be second down. Well, you often say that sort of opens the playbook now, second and short. What do you think, early shot here? I like where you're right going. There. Obviously, we've been together for a while because you know me. I want to take that shot early and loosen things up. Now Allen off the bootleg. Looking right sideline, but it's incomplete. All right, that one fell incomplete there, but the best quarterbacks, They'll miss up 40% of their throws somewhere in that neighborhood, similar to a great hitter in baseball, who's going to fail seven out of 10 times and still have a great year. In this case, you want perfection, but way better that it hits the ground instead of going to an opposite color jersey. They'll try and pick up the first with Gore. And he won't be close to a first down as he runs into a wall right around the line of scrimmage. Nothing doing on second and third down after that nine-yard gain on first. How about the fellas with the stars on the side of their helmets rising up on defense? We always hear about the Cowboys rushing offense. Their rush defense is pretty good as well, I think, because they're so cohesive. Defensive line linebackers really work well together. And the punt team on now as this one's sent away. And not what he was hoping for there as this will hit in the end zone for a touchback. The Dallas Cowboys, here comes their offense again onto the field. And Charles, they've won three of their last four. Again, you saw their most recent win at Detroit. What do you make of this team? It seems like you get a good sample, you get a bad sample, but they seem to be playing a little bit better. And I know there's been a lot of focus on the loss at home to Minnesota on a Sunday night recently, but quietly they've won three out of their last four. The tough part for them, though, is the defenses they're going to face in their next three games. They're at New England, maybe the best defense in the league. Buffalo Bills, they're built on defense. That's on Thanksgiving Day at home. And then they head to Chicago. What do you think of when you think of the Bears? Defense. defense. They're going to have to solve three really good defenses if they want to take control of the division. After the incompletion, here's second and 10 from the 20. <laughs> They'll try the right side with Elliott. Looking for a seam, but finding none. He'll get back to the line of scrimmage, and that's it. No gain on that one as it brings up a third and ten. 
And as a defensive end, getting off the ball quickly, swarming to the football, making a tackle, that's what we saw right there. Yeah, and that's what their job is. And really, a lot of the time, they have to throttle back a little bit in the run game because you know those defensive ends. They're like in a sprinter stance. They're just headed straight for the quarterback. That was good recognition on that play to hold them to no gain. Going to take a shot for Gallup, and he knocks the ball away, and it falls incomplete. But that certainly looked like something that they discussed all week in practice, getting ready for this one. Take the big shot right out of the gate. At worst, you'll open up the defense a little bit, loosen them up, have them back on their heels. So on fourth down, here's Chris Jones to punt it away. The all-pro Andre Roberts deep for Buffalo. A big boot that time, 57 yards the official distance. And the Bills will take over the football with a first and 10. Here comes Buffalo's offense again out onto the field, and they're at 7-3 and three right now, Charles. Now, early in the year, if you're like, ah, they got off to a good start, maybe it was the schedule, but I think 11 weeks in at 7-3, and three, we have enough of a sample size to say, look, this is a good football team. And don't we say every week any team can beat any team in the NFL. So seven and three in that league, yeah, you shouldn't sneeze at that. Don't take it lightly. And how about Josh Allen, their quarterback? He's playing awfully well. Threw for 256 yards, three touchdowns, no interceptions. Hasn't thrown a pick since, what, week five? Yeah. And still continues to run the ball as he did as a rookie. Seven carries, 56 yards, and another touchdown. This kid is starting to round into form. 163 consecutive throws without an interception. But quickly, let's look ahead at the schedule. They will get the 3-7 and seven Broncos at home week 12, and then they're going to be tested. Cowboys, Ravens, Steelers, Patriots, and three of those four on the road. The beauty of being able to play a zone defense, when you can sit back and see the ball coming out of the quarterback's hands, guess what? Creates a lot of confusion. Kind of a muddle in the middle of the field where you can go make a play on the football. On third down, they'll run with Gore. And this time he's going backwards. So after the no gain on the last attempt, here they get him behind the line. All right, quick observation, Brandon, because early on in this game, I'm seeing linebackers playing with their noses close to the line of scrimmage. And my guess is the wheels are turning on that other sideline. As a play caller, you're filing that away right now, aren't you? Yeah, you're trying to find that opportunity later on when you can play action them or stick something to them between the second and the third level. Here's Austin. A big kick that time, 52 yards. And the Cowboys will take over the football with a first and 10. And now Dallas gets set to take the field. And things haven't started so well for this side. Two drives, two punts. So now you've got to start looking not just at play calling, but which guy's going to step forward and say, OK, let's get this thing done. Because within that unit of 11, sometimes one guy can make a big time play and break through the barrier. They start on the ground with Elliott. They'll only get a couple up to about the 30. Well, he was looking for some running room, and there wasn't a whole lot of it there on that play. I think he was lucky to get a couple yards out of it. Because those defenders, they were rallying to the football pretty quickly. The last run got a couple. Here's second and eight. They'll try to sweep with Allian. Gets through, and now an opening. That one a first down pickup of eight. That type of run right there, that just fires me up when I watch it because that's maybe the most underrated aspect of his game. The ability to break tackles and know where the first down chains are and pick them up. He's tough, good pedigree. Dad Stacy was a linebacker at Missouri. Yeah, and how about mom on the track team? So I think that's where the speed came from. And, she just, and she's not shy about letting us know that, too. <laughs> yeah, I got the best of both worlds. Give him three on first down. It'll set up a second and seven. What's the old expression, three yards in a cloud of dust? In this case, it's dust-covered pellets. It's no longer that old grass that we used to play on right and chew it up. Now, we've got that artificial surface. You see the pellets go up. Still a nice play by the defense. Prescott finding Witten, and he'll work it across midfield inside the 45. And he's got a first down as a tackle made at the Bills' 44-yard line. 
Boy, you got to think that having the 37-year-old veteran Jason Witten back at tight end is going to be great for Dak Prescott for plays just like that. And you think to last year when Witten wasn't there, it was kind of a rotating carousel. They had Blake Jarwin, Jeff Swain, Rico Gathers, Dalton Schultz. But Witten back out there and doing his thing again. He didn't seem in a rush. I guess they just didn't know where the play clock was. I think you're right about that because there was no hurried movements there, right? No up-tempo at all. Clock just ran out. I think he was as surprised as maybe his bench was. Now they need 15 yards on this series after the delay of game. First and 15. Play action now. Prescott. And now he'll tuck it and run. And avoids the contact by sliding. He'll get 11 yards back on the scramble as it brings up second down. Partner, as a quarterback, sometimes you just got to know when the clock has gone off in your head, it's time to go. Tuck it and get all you can. To throw again on second down. Prescott, and there is Amari Cooper, his first catch. And he's got a first down let's as a tackle made at the Bills' 25-yard line. Now that was pretty. They executed that curl route versus zone coverage, and that changes things a little bit because against man, it's often a tight curl, a tight, sharply run route. Against zone, you're just looking for that open spot, that dead area, so you may curl it a little bit wider just to get to that place. And usually a tight window. He fired a bullet in there for the completion. Completes it to Jason Witten. And he gets it all the way down inside the 10 and mark him at the 5. Chewing up big yardage. Another nice gain there. This one goes for 20. The first opportunity in the red zone for the Cowboys. They've got it first and goal at the 6. To throw is Prescott. They'll roll him out right. He'll, and the Cowboys are in the end zone for the touchdown. Not the first time on this drive we saw him take matters into his own hands, and this time he finishes things off with a touchdown run. You're not going to be happy with me, but I think he took matters into his own feet, didn't he? No. Oh. <laughs> Davis from the top rope. <laughs> I like it. Extra point by Moore, up and good. And it's now a 7-0 game. Following the touchdown, here's Marr to kick it away. This is fielded at the goal line. And he'll take it a yard or so past the 20, call it the 21-yard line. Here's the Buffalo offense now as they get set to take over here. And this is their third drive right now. Maybe not about points, just about getting something. They haven't gotten a first down yet in this game. It's a mental barrier you don't think about. Until you go a couple of drives without getting a first down. Then all of a sudden it looms big. It gets harder and harder to actually attain that first first down. They'll start on the ground with Gore. And he'll be upended after a gain of five. Up to the 25-yard line. Well, it's time for them to be good teammates right here. And what I mean by that is possess the ball for a little while. Get at least two first downs. Give their defense a chance to settle down a little bit after they give up a touchdown. The first down run got five. Here's second and five. Watch the curl. Watch the curl. Allen going to throw. He's got the connection to Cole Beasley. And brought down, but not before reaching the 45-yard line. 19 yards there on the catch and run. 
Some think the teams really won't throw a slant route unless you have a receiver that has a lot of stature to him. But sometimes the little guys, they get lost in there. People can't really locate them, and they run that quick cut on the slant, and oftentimes they can turn it into big plays. On the ground with the rookie, Devin Singletary. And he is met quickly in the backfield. Down he goes, folded like a lawn chair. Run coverage, excellent there from the defensive end position. How many times do we sit with coaches and they talk about a base defensive end, a guy who can anchor and play with leverage? We just saw a great example of it. And how about the bonus, tackling the runner for a loss? On second and 11 now, Allen. And this one caught by Beasley. And he's going to have another first down here as the tackle's made at the Cowboys' 45-yard line. Beasley signed with the Bills in March just before his 30th birthday after seven years with the Cowboys, hoping that he can be a very valuable slot receiver in Buffalo. Just under 700 yards last year and three touchdowns in Dallas. On first down, it's goal. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. Yikes, a four-yard loss really sets him back now for second down. Anytime you call an inside running play, you just know there should be a lot of congestion there. You're counting on your offensive line to take control of the line of scrimmage. That didn't happen in this case, and that play got bottled up. This is a draw play. Allen gives to Singletary, and that didn't fool anybody. He's going to be dropped to the backfield. It'll go as a loss of a yard, and it'll set up third down. Double this guy has to be a priority before moving up to the next level because the big fella, he just ate that one alive, just stuffed it. In fact, before the game, he was talking to us, and he's like, hey, these pants make me look fat? And we said, nah, man, you're just a whole lot of guy. He is at well over 300 pounds. He's a big man. And they're going to get him. He's taken down for a sack back at the 47-yard line. The sack by Robert Quinn. There's a little bit of defense right there. Nickel set, five defensive backs. They just snuffed out every route that was going. Quarterback never got rid of the football. The Bills send the punter out as he's on to kick it away. And he gets it away. A directional kick going toward the sideline. And this will be out of bounds. Now it's a question of where they'll mark it. And they'll say it crosses at the 11-yard line. After one, 7 nothing. on EA Sports. The Dallas offense here set to begin the drive. Things progressing to plan so far. Their defense has been solid, and they've got themselves a 7-0 lead after the touchdown the last time they had the ball. And this is no time to even think about, hey, are we going to milk the clock? Hey, are we just going to do ball control? This is the NFL. 7-0 leads, they don't last very long unless you continue to push the envelope on offense. And we have to give credit to him for buying time and extending the play. But you know, there's some really upset defenders on that one. They thought that they had him. Instead, he was coated in Teflon and got away. On second down, it's Elliott. And running room scarce here. He's going to be stopped in his tracks at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play that time, and they'll look to convert on what will be a third and four. An extra defensive back here for the Bills on third down. Prescott. And the throw there going to be incomplete. Well, the other day they told us when we've got third and five or less, we have to be able to convert. And I guess every team would say that, Charles, but an opportunity miss there. What they were trying to tell us is they believe it's a matchup game at that point. And they liked some matchups that they had, thought they could exploit them, unable to do so on that play. On is the punt team now as this one sent away. And when it's said and done, it's a 58-yard punt. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. And the Bills getting set to go. The results for them so far not that great. Well, not good at all. Three drives, three punts. Yeah, and now what you're doing is you're looking at your play sheet, trying to figure out what you're going against defensively. I wonder, are they showing them something they haven't seen or anticipated in practice, and maybe that's throwing them off? Or do they just have to go to a different play calling section and try and run some offense that way? And he'll run straight into a wall of tacklers at the line of scrimmage. It's second down. 
And when the defense wins and gives up no yardage on a running play, that's something they can build on and carry themselves forward throughout the game. So after the run for no gain, here's second and ten. Gore. He's able to rattle off six on the carry, and that'll get him to third and four. I think we can safely say that those types of players are the backbone of this offense. We know not every run's going to be a big hitter, but you know they'll take that type of result on each and every attempt. The Bills on third down. 0 for 3 to this point. They could use a conversion. This is third and four. So the shotgun snap to Allen. And he's got his man out of the backfield. That's complete. And able to rip off a big chunk of yardage before being dropped inside the 40. And they pick up 25 as they convert on third. Mike 19! Mike 54! Now it's Gore. And his rough afternoon continues. He's going nowhere again. Leighton Vander Esch, third in the NFL in tackles as a rookie last year there on the stop. I would think as a play call, you want to look for some quick hitters to your tight end. Any type of a route to replace where that linebacker was, because when you saw the speed with which he reacted and stuck that play, maybe use that speed against him in the future. And he'll take this one down to the 36. It's a gain of about three, but it's going to leave him with third and still seven yards to go. They just keep trying, but so far, finding no room for him to run. Not none whatsoever. In fact, you run the numbers. He's under three yards of carry at the moment. The Bills on third down. They've only converted once in four tries. This is third and seven. Now Allen. And that's complete to Croft. And he's going to have another first down here as the tackle's made at the Cowboys' 12-yard line. Partner, it's a lot of fun watching the NFL now, isn't it? Because when the big fella runs routes, it used to be when we were kids, he'd run about three My different fight. routes, and that was it. Now he can run anything and catch the balls we just saw there. Here's Allen on first and ten. He's going to hit his man out of the backfield, complete. And here he'll get it down to the seven. Four yards on the pickup, and it'll make it second down. Four yards on that last completion, so that sets up second and six. Back to the ground game here. Gore. And Gore will get in. Touchdown, Buffalo. Taking it in from seven yards away as they are now on the board here in the first half. And they're able to run it in. It started with a battle in the trenches. They won there, and they got in for six points. And that's going to be a tough one for the defense to deal with. They've got to go to the bench now and figure out how we're going to slow down this running game because on that particular play, they had no answer. Hauschka adds the extra point, and we are tied at seven. So I'll leave it at seven now as they kick it away. This is taken at his four. A little juke. And he'll get it up to about the 26-yard line just across the 25. Here's the Dallas offense now heading back out onto the field. And on the last go-around, they really couldn't get anything going. 
They had to punt from deep inside their own territory, which means you're going to lose the field position battle as a general rule. What they're looking for now is a little more consistency, move the ball at least a few times on offense, get a couple of first downs, and hopefully flip the field. And just something to build off of. That's what they're looking for here. Elliott going to bite off about seven on that one. A good run on first down. A solid run on first down. Gain of seven leaves him with a second and three. Well, no matter how they phrase it, staying on schedule, staying ahead of the sticks, whatever you want to call it, seven yards on first down, that fits the bill. On second down now, it's Elliott and to the 42-yard line here and brought down there. Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. A tough run by Ezekiel Elliott, the fourth overall pick in the 2016 draft. If you watch tape of him in college, you saw plenty of those runs because I know the highlights showed him in the open field breaking away from people, but that's how he wore down defenses, those exact type of runs. This is Elliott. It's a six-yard pickup, but it gets him to second and four. Let's talk a little football 101 here because one of the keys to advancing the ball downfield, success on first down. Huge difference, as we know, between second and four and second and eight and nine. The last run got six, now second and four. Out of the gun, it's Elliott. And he'll be brought down right at midfield after a gain of only a couple. But that's all about doing the dirty work right there defensively. Second and short yardage, that's all about plugging those gaps, not giving the running back a crease to run through, and has a nice job to hold him just a couple and force a third down. Prescott now, option right, and this one goes nowhere. Losing yardage on the play back at the 46. A rough go there on third down, a loss of four. And on this play, the read for the quarterback was the defensive end, and he was totally focused on the quarterback. He should have given it off inside to the running back. Instead, he kept it and ended up taking a loss on the play. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. And this is going to carry well into the end zone for a touchback. Here's the Buffalo offense now as they get set to take over here. The last possession, these guys were able to tie the game with a touchdown, and now they'll have a chance to move out in front. Yeah, let's give a big assist to the defense who got the ball back. The special teams went out there, handled things. They've got it. They've got momentum. I know they're eager to get out there and put it on display. Throwing on first down is Allen. He's got Gore. And he'll be upended after a gain of five up to the 25-yard line. Well, the returns for the Cowboys on Leighton Van Der Esch have been pretty good so far. You know, a lot of Cowboy Nation questioned when they took him number 19 overall this season to go instead of Calvin Ridley. But Leighton Van Der Esch would get 140 tackles last year. Franchise rookie record for Dallas en route to a Pro Bowl appearance. Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. A gain of nine yards. First down, Bill. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. Yo, 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 yo. Yo! Throwing now is Allen. Blitz coming, and down he goes. Well, oh, free safety blitz, that can be a gamble, but it proves fruitful there. Yeah, you're exactly right about the gamble because oftentimes the free safety is the last line of defense against a long pass. And when he comes at the quarterback, he'd better get home and make the play. Otherwise, a big play could result for the offense. Got to imagine the pass rush will be equally intense here on second down following this. And that pressure gets to him again. The sack by Michael Bennett, the native of tiny Independence, Louisiana. Well, this is what happens when you get behind the chains, as people like to say, when you have obvious passing situations, hard to vary it up and fool a defense. And you My hate those situations if you're an O-lineman, right? Oh, without a doubt, because you just know they're coming, and you never know exactly how. They can be exotic in their blitzes, or their athletic ability just takes over. Now throwing on third down there, but he cannot connect. 
But well, we quit counting yardage on that one, didn't we? That was truly third and a mile, wasn't it? It was. I thought they might just go underneath, but they didn't. They wanted to get the first down there. Yeah, they tried to pick up the huge chunk unsuccessfully. I'm with you. I would have tried to take some yardage just to gain some field position. The Bills send the punter out. He's been terrific so far. Averaging 50 yards a boot so far as this one's away. Now Austin. So possession goes over here on the punt. And out will come the offense as they take over. And now Dallas gets set to take the field and hoping to do better than they did their last possession when they punted the football. Appeal to the vanity of your offensive line. Tell them that they control your fate. Leverage guys. Win the line of scrimmage. If you do that, you start to win first down. You win second down. And guess what? You start accumulating first downs. And that's what they need in order to not punt the ball again. A pretty good-looking run there on first down. That'll go for nine yards, just short of the line to gain. Give him nine on the carry that time, and they're set up with a second and one. First play of the drive. Let's give credit all around. Excellent blocking, but the guy carrying the ball, he was the finisher. A really nice run. Yeah, let's go second. On second down, it's Elliott. But he'll be brought down. Oh, that's a face mask. Certainly looked like it indeed. Here come the flags. Officials so cognizant of that call nowadays, but that would look pretty easy. Yeah, you're right. They took out of their hands having to wonder whether it's a five yard or a 15 yard inadvertent or not. Now it's a lot easier. You see it, you call it. And now it's first and 10. A big mistake, especially when you factor in the personal foul yardage. Prescott from the gun. And this is caught by Witten, the tight end. And down he goes, taking it inside the 10, just shy of the 5 at the 6. 23 yards on the play. As far as tight ends go, this guy's not a speed burner. He's much more of an inline blocking type of a tight end. But how about this last play? Made a nice catch and picked up the first down. That's what impresses me about him. When he's called upon, he usually gets it done. And this is caught for a Cowboy touchdown. Randall Cobb there to make the grab. And the Cowboys have taken the lead. And he's a little bit on the shorter side as a receiver. Maybe sometimes for the defense, tough to find the little guys, right? Yeah, sometimes they get lost in the traffic. But usually what it means is that rather than just winning with height or even speed, they use their quickness to find a way to get open. Well, tall, short, wide, skinny, whatever. There it results in a touchdown. Following the touchdown, here's Marr to kick it away. Fielded about a yard deep. And he'll wind up about four yards shy of where he would have been if he had taken a knee as they'll start at the 21-yard line. The Bills offense now, they get set to head back onto the field. It was still more than a minute to go in the half. Time to try to mount a drive. And I would think that they would have to. This is today's NFL. you got to push it whenever you get an opportunity. You can never have enough points with the high-powered offenses that you face. And analytics will tell you, try and score when given the opportunity. He's going to look deep down the field. And that will be incomplete. Would have been a big hitter if they had connected. Instead, it's second down. Well, I guess we just discovered that someone is certainly not going to sit back and just take it in this game, huh? No, they were trying to get that touchdown back in one shot. One shot, trying to help out his defense and let the other team know they were coming after him. Allen again here on second and ten. And he finds Beasley complete. They'll wind up getting ten back as that sets him up for third down. 
slant route's effective no matter who's running the route and catching the ball. But when you have a receiver of that stature, you have to be a little bit more precise throwing it. You don't have the same catch radius with the bigger targets. Yeah, baby. Now yeah. the Bills are going to use the first of their timeouts as they'll stop it with just over a minute to go before halftime. These guys have punted four times already, and they're staring at a fifth, barring a conversion here on third down. Here's Allen to throw it. Now they go screen. It's complete. And he went backwards. He'll be down at the 30. Now the Cowboys are going to burn the first of their timeouts as the clock will stop with 55 seconds to go until halftime. The Bills send the punter out as he's on for the fifth time here today. And he deserves a bronze leg as he gets this one away. 51 yards on the punt there. Here's the Dallas offense now heading back out onto the field. And we'll see how this is played. Offensively, they've got the lead. Not a whole lot of time left. What do you think, Charles? Well, it's tempting to try and add to your lead, but a mistake there... That could change things in a big way. I say go ahead, take the knee, get on out for the half. That's trash. Prescott looks to throw on first. That one complete. Elliott and able to get this across the 20 before going out of bounds. That first down completion only netted him three. Second and seven. Looking to throw. Prescott. They'll set up the screen to Elliott. And they'll get it all the way up about five yards shy of midfield. The Cowboys going to use their second timeout now. As the clock will stop with 35 seconds to go in quarter number two. up he's gonna keep it and he slides to avoid the hit nothing open downfield he keeps it himself for 11 and a first down man defensively that hurts they got him out of his rhythm they had him hemmed in but somehow he was able to tuck it away and get away for a gain on first and 10 Prescott and that'll be incomplete with just six seconds left on the clock. Here now, Brett Maher. He hit from 62 in his rookie season of 2018. And this will be spotted on the other side of the field. It's a 61-yard attempt. And this one will not get there. It's off to the left anyway. It's no good. And this score will stay right where it is. And this is one of the risks you run when you attempt a long field goal. If you miss, the defense takes over the spot of the placement. So now they've got a chance to get one more drive in before halftime. Try to get one more in here before the quarter breaks. A final shot before half for Allen. And this will be incomplete. Physical play on the football there, and it's second down. So we have reached halftime with a touchdown. That's the difference on the scoreboard. As we'll get you over to Orlando, where standing by is Jonathan Coachman. He has our EA Sports halftime report. The Cowboys will get the football first here, and they have the lead as well as we are underway in quarter three. The Bills come to the line to start their next drive. They're down here, but very much in this game. What, what's the tonality of a coach's talk when a game is within striking distance like this at intermission? Typically, what they're doing is emphasizing the things that went well in the first half and wanting more of that. Sure, you've got to go over some of the errors and clean up some things because there's a reason you're down. 
but overall, I think they want to stay positive, stay up with this team. We're just starting the second half, Mike and we've got the football. Let's go ahead and punch it in, and then we'll take it from there. See how that recipe works. Now Allen, off the bootleg, rolling to his right, and an alley to run. And he'll slide down to avoid the contact. Josh Allen, very athletic at 6'5", showing the versatility, picking up the first on the scramble. Well, that's a prime example of how Josh Allen can hurt a defense. You remember back to his rookie season a year ago, 631 rushing yards, second only to Lamar Jackson. Also had eight rushing touchdowns. He is a dual threat QB. On first down, Gore. And this winds up a pickup of two, maybe two and a half to about the 39. They tried a quick hitter inside, but that one was swallowed up because what they're hoping, those big defensive linemen will take the bait and move laterally and open up a crease that they can run through. Didn't happen on that play. From the 39, Allen. And he's going to have to eat this one as down he goes. Malik Collins. He's the culprit dropping him for a two-yard loss. So one quick, easy analysis about why they've struggled so far. They keep putting themselves in third and long situations. They just took another sack right there. And the offensive film session tomorrow may be a little longer than it normally is. <laughs> Not a lot of positive grades will be handed out thus far. Rolling to his left. He may try and run for this. And he's going to be taken down here with a penalty flag on the field. Well, your QB's been sacked four times in the game already, and they're the holding goal. And you know darn well the offensive line coach is frustrated and upset that he's been hit that many times already. He doesn't really care that they hold now. Just don't let him get hit anymore. Third and 10 wasn't going to be easy. Now after the holding penalty, they have to deal with a third and 20. Working out of the shotgun. Here's Allen. The throw on target to his receiver, McKenzie. Just a five-yard pickup, but it leads to fourth down. One of the money routes for any offense, the drag route. So tough to defend because the receiver can stop at any point and make himself available to the quarterback and get a completion. But I love the communication we saw there. All the defenders pointing out the receiver, where he was going, and then they're able to rally to the ball after the catch and stop him short of a first down. And he couldn't get it to check up. That kicks all the way into the end zone for a touchback. The Cowboys offense now, they head out for their first possession of the second half. They have the lead here. Well, we talk a lot about pregame speeches. What are halftime speeches like? For the most part, not nearly as emotional. They're a lot more clinical. Every now and then, though, they'll get after you if they think they need to light a fire. But in this case, let's go into the virtual locker room because here's what I think happened. They got in there and they said, listen, let's take control right away. Yeah, Defense, yeah. we've got, we got, got the lead. Defense, don't give up any points. Turn the ball back over to the offense and let them go down and score and give us more of a cushion in the game. Check so far. Defense shut them down. Let's see what the offense gets done. From the 22, here's second and eight. Again, it's Elliott. And he'll be upended here after a pickup of three, getting it out to the 25. Here comes the ball! Well, that's not a run that's going to make any of the highlight tapes, but they've been moving it well all game on the ground. This is another one that keeps them moving forward. Prescott from the gun on third. Complete to Jason Witten. Give him 10 there. Good enough for a Cowboy first down. The last time we saw Jason Witten on a football field instead of the broadcasting booth was, of course, two years ago, 2017. He had 63 catches, 560 yards, five touchdowns. It was his 11th Pro Bowl that season for a man who came into the league back in 2003. They go back to Elliott. He's been busy. Seven yards on the pickup there, and it'll leave him with a second and three. And that looked like some pretty easy yardage there right up the gut. And he's a guy that has some height to him. So when you don't have to drop a shoulder or create or get through contact or trash, makes it a lot easier to stay upright, see the field, and make a run as we just saw there. On second down, it's Pollard. And he'll be brought down right at the 45-yard line. 
They'll get three as the drive continues. It's a first down. So many teams want to throw the ball in this situation nowadays, but I love watching a team that has enough confidence to go ahead and run the football in that situation. That's almost a tendency breaker. Off play action to Elliott. Here's Prescott. On the crossing route, he hits his man, Amari Cooper. And he is tackled inside the 40, not quite to the 35. Give him 18 on that one, and it's a Dallas first down. First down at the 37 yard line. So first and 10 now in Buffalo territory at the 37 yard line. They play fake to Elliott. Now Prescott. Toward the right sideline, but it's incomplete. Blake Jarwin, the intended receiver, and that'll bring up second down. Before the game, they were running the route tree about as efficiently and effectively as we could have possibly imagined, but sometimes the passes just go awry. Yeah, let's face it. When you're running the route tree in pregame, you don't have defenders breathing down your neck. You don't have defensive backs making plays on the football. Hard to replicate the intensity of the game in pregame. Dak dropping this one off for Zeke. And he's got a first down as a tackle made at the Bills 21. And a good quarterback facing zone coverage. If he has just a little bit of time to survey the scene, that's what's going to happen. No doubt about it. If there's no pressure, he's going to continue to pick them apart because he'll have all that time to find someone open downfield. You can only cover for so long. So maybe they want to go to a zone blitz scheme, get a little bit more pressure. Remember when Carolina did that against Denver? They lost the game ultimately. They dropped the defensive end out, and he ended up with an interception in that game in Super Bowl 50. Maybe some sort of scheme like that to try and get more pressure at the passer. A rare misstep on that last play because the drive has been strong, but now it's second and 12. They go to Elliott again. And he'll go down here at the 12-yard line. They get 11 back on that one. It leads to third down. Looks to me like maybe there's a little attrition setting in with this drive. Because when you see that type of a run, I get the feeling the defense getting a little bit tired. And that's the last thing they need, especially when they look up at the scoreboard. They missed a field goal on their last drive. Here they need something to even get into field goal range on third down. Throwing. Prescott. And that is incomplete. I'm going to need some help with this one. How did he miss him? Wide open in the end zone. He's not hurried. He's not hit. And somehow, incomplete? Yeah. What happened? During film study, that's one where he's just going to shake his head, not be able to believe it. Six points go by the wayside on that one. <laughs> the kick by Marr is good. And they will move up by 10 now, 17-7. to seven. Of course, the door for Meyer was opened after a little bit of a surprise move. The Cowboys letting go of Dan Bailey last year. Yeah, Maher took over in the preseason. He's from Nebraska via the Canadian Football League where he kicked for four years. And I saw him personally make two game-winning field goals last season against Detroit and in Atlanta. After the made field goal, Marr back out there to kick it away. That'll be taken in the end zone. And he won't return this one. He'll go down to a knee, and they'll start at the 25. Here's the Buffalo offense now as they get set to take over here. They trail by 10, 17-7 as they come up on a first and 10. Allen and the Bills now with a first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. Here's Allen. And incomplete, a drop there in the middle third of the field. That'll bring up second down. But plain and simple, 
That's the second time today that he's dropped a pass. And that one, I think, maybe even a little easier than the earlier one that he dropped. Surprising. Was this game announced as a night game prior to, and maybe his rhythm got is just off? He's got know. thrown off. He's got to wake up, enjoy the sunshine, and go play. The pass to Brown as he hauls it in. And he's upended at the 33, following a good pickup of eight. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. Here's Gore. And he's going to run into a brick wall right in the middle of the field, and I don't think he got there. Call it no gain there, and it leads to a fourth down. Well, they picked up a portion of it, but not all that they needed. Now that leads to a decision on fourth and one. Let's see what they decide to do. The Bills send the punter out. He's been one of their few bright spots so far. Oh, good move. 47 yards on the punt that time, just one yard on the return. And possession will switch hands first and 10. So out come the Cowboys now as their offense gets set to take over. And last time they were able to churn some clock. They got the field goal, added on to their lead. But that was a drive that was so long, it should have ended in a touchdown. You know that's how they felt. And we'll both be headed to the airport after the game. But we probably should go to the post-game press conference because someone's going to ask the head coach about this drive. And he's going to profess that he was happy to get points. But we know that's not true. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. After this type of a drive, not getting a touchdown, a huge disappointment. Well, using Zeke Elliott in the passing game, that's something Cowboy fans are getting used to. Last year, 77 receptions. And you think back to his rookie season, he had 32 and then 26 his second year. But he's really on the uptick. Now Elliott. And not much to speak of. Call it a one-yard gain up to the 26. Well, praise has to go to the guys in the offensive line because they've had a very nice, productive day running the football. How about that poor defensive line? They've been knocked around the entire game, and while they slowed them down on that run, can they continue to do so? Because they haven't had much success throughout this ball game. A 20th carry here for Elliott. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. It's a gain of 16 in the Dallas first down. Yeah, another good run there. He's been such a big part of their success here this afternoon. And that last carry, it puts him over 100 yards now for the day. So after a good run by Zeke, another first and 10. I smell fear in that I smell fear in that And he'll hit the slant route. That's caught by Cooper. And taking it across midfield and inside the 45. 14 yards, good for a Cowboy first down. Under a minute to go in this third quarter as they come up first and 10. Check 26, check 26. Here's Elliott. Tackle made there by Matt Milano. Let's give a lot of credit to the offensive line. They've been able to move the ball really well on the ground the entire game. And while that wasn't a huge one, that's okay. They'll take them in short, steady bursts. The last run good for two. Here's second and eight. Here's Prescott. That's complete to Cobb. And he'll go down, and that will do it for the third quarter of action. We have played three quarters. We'll return with more after this break. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Prescott now. A perfect eight for eight to start the second half. Not bad. First and ten. To throw is Prescott. He's got a man complete. It's Amari Cooper. And he'll have it in the red zone before he crosses over out of bounds. 13 yards and a first down, Cowboys. These guys are running offense like you drive. The pedal is down. Stomp down. How about that? Back-to-back -back completions. They are rolling. So much for being conservative and running that football. Prescott going to come up first and 10. And he's four for four now, throwing the ball to start the drive. And he'll go down here at the 12-yard line. Five yards is the tally on first down. That brings up second and five. 
Oh, oh, that's one to warm the hearts of all those old school football players, isn't it? Tough, hard, gritty run. Got behind his pads, bowled over a few people. Look at that one, right up the gut. So through three quarters, no reason to lighten up now. Prescott, a quick throw caught by Cooper. And now they're inside the 10 as he's brought down at the 9. Only three yards on the catch. It's third down. The Cowboys on third down. They've converted just two for six thus far. This time they face a third and two. Prescott to throw it. And that's Elliott complete. They only got two, but that was enough as they'll convert to make it first and goal. Well, they've had a great, impressive drive going here, and that pickup ensures the drive continues. And not only do you continue the drive, which is demoralizing for the guys on the defense side of the ball right now, but you make your own defense happy. They're able to get a little more rest over on the sidelines while this one continues downfield. Now Elliott, and maybe a measure of revenge there. He's had his way in this one, but this time they get him behind the line. They'll wind up losing three yards here, and that'll bring up a second and goal. Prescott now. Caught by Cobb. And the stop will come inside the five at the four. Five yards that time on the completion. And now it's third and goal. Never make the mistake that the slot receivers, especially the little guys like we're watching here, are just quicker than fast. A lot of them combine quickness and speed, and they catch a lot of footballs as we just saw there. A lot of tired bodies on that field, but this is a big play. Third, and that is caught. Touchdown, Cowboys. Randall Cobb, his second touchdown of the afternoon. And the Cowboys, they push out in front further. In order to lead in a game, you're going to get plenty of contributors, but that's his second touchdown catch of this game. He's one of the key guys in this one. And you better believe he'll be looking for the hat trick here as this one continues to go. Extra point by Moore, up and good. And that'll make this a three-score game now. The lead moves to 17. Following the touchdown, here's Marr to kick it away. This is taken at the three. He'll bring it back to just about the 25, call it the 24-yard line. Now the Bills' offense gets ready to head back onto the field, and they're coming off a three and out, my friend. I think they've got to look at that play sheet and go to a spot that they haven't gone before. Time to shake things up a little bit to try and get this offense moving. Okay, so how do you do that? How do you shake things up? You look at what you've called before, realize it hasn't worked <laughs> Go to so something well, else. And maybe you try and find one of those special plays for one of your better players, and maybe try and hit something big and get things going in the excitement area. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. Tyler Croft, the tight end, the one he was looking for. And it's second down. Another incompletion. You know, it's a wonder he's still moving around back there the number of times he's been sacked. Yeah, he's staying out there, isn't he? And you don't think about it much in a game like this, but he's showing incredible leadership. Still competing, still fighting, not taking himself out of a ball game that appears lost. They'll run a draw now with Singletary. So a nice job to break the one tackle, but not much daylight after that as he's brought down. After getting stuffed on first down, not much better there. Two-yard gain. Well, that's a good start to this drive on the defensive side of the ball. 4C and completion on first down. Then you're able to shut down the running play on second. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised now. A little bit of pressure going into the quarterback in the expected passing situation. Singletary again. 
And Singletary has it stripped. And a good tackle there right around the 30. Stops him short of the first down. Wow. That ball gets knocked free, but a teammate comes along and scoops it up. Almost like, it's almost like baseball. Guys at bat, people are on base in scoring position. One guy doesn't get them home. The next guy comes through and picks him up. And avoids the turnover. Allen going to go on fourth down. He gets it to Brown. Good play. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. Give him 18 on that one as the Bills are going to have a first down. Fourth down trailing in the fourth quarter. They felt compelled to go for it, and they got it. Well, I'd look down at my play sheet, and what I would find, Mike plays that have been successful throughout the game that have worked in the distance you need, and that's exactly what they got done. First down, and they're going to throw it on him. He's got a first down and then some inside the 40. And finally brought down at the 38. 14 yards, and the Bills will get a new set of downs. Allen now, six for six since coming back out of the locker room. It's first and ten. From the gun, it's Allen. And this one caught by Beasley. 16 yards there, and the Bills have a first down. So that'll back him up five. Let's go, baby. The hey, delay of game game. backs him up five, first and 15. I can't believe they let you play. I can't believe they even let you play. Following the penalty, it's Gore. Trying to run inside, but nothing there. Jalen Smith, who took a huge step forward last year, in on the tackle for Dallas. Seems pretty obvious defensively a key was stopping the run game. How have they done it so successfully? To me, it seems that these guys really did a nice job of paying attention during the scouting report meeting. And you know, Brandon, when they do those, they talk about the top plays that these guys like to run. The best runs for the top running back. Those are the ones you focus on and want to take away, and they've done that pretty successfully in this game. They like going to him in the slot. He catches another one. I think this comes under the heading of, until they stop him, why not go back to him? He has something going really well. Great working relationship with the guy throwing Mike the ball, Bain. and they keep making the connection. The Bills on third down. Just a 20% success rate at 2 of 10. This is third and 11. To the air, Allen. And that will be incomplete. Jeff Heath, the strong safety, able to get in there on the coverage. Another wayward pass. You know, things started out poorly in this game, and to be frank, they just really haven't gotten much better. And all that does is embolden a secondary. They feel good about what's going on, and they just play better and better. So they're going for it, and here's Allen. He's going to let it go deep for the end zone. And they will not be able to hook up there. It's incomplete. The Bills drive stalls out on fourth down. And the Cowboys' defense is going to get them the football back. So Prescott and the Cowboys now with a first and 10 at their own 22. This thrown quickly out to Cooper. No gain there on the completion. Second and ten. Well, the stats that matter on this play don't help a team very much, unless, of course, you're playing defense. If you're getting points per reception, you got a reception, but yeah. no yardage. Great job by the defense, though. They, they read through that one. They read through it, gave up no yardage, we got, we got, and people got, got credit for tackles. Pretty good deal. On second down, Elliott. Call it a gain of four, and it'll leave them with a third down and six to go. That's it. That's what you want. Straight ahead, positive gain. Just keep that clock ticking. Brings up third and six. 
The Cowboys on third down. They're at 50%, four for eight. This will be third and six. From the shotgun, it's Prescott. And he's able to hook up with Michael Gallup. And he's taken down, but able to slip across the 35. 11 yards and a Cowboy first down. And defensively, they just don't seem to have much of an answer for this passing game. Not at all. And look at the confidence that's exhibited here with that type of a lead. Clock on their side. Instead of running it, they're still throwing it, trying to pick up first downs and keeping the football. A first down carry by Elliott. And he'll be brought down somewhat awkwardly here and a late flag as well. I think this one's going to be a face mask. They're down here in the fourth, and that personal foul penalty is not going to help. No, in these types of situations, players will tell you that's extra intensity. From where we sit, it's actually frustration, not a good play. And now it's first and ten. A big mistake, especially when you factor in the personal foul yardage. After the penalty, it's Elliott. And he'll get it down on the play to the 37. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll be second down. And I'm guessing you'd say this is kind of the key here. Grind out some yardage, work on that clock, see if you can continue to tick it down. Definitely, you want to bleed things out at this point, right? Continue to possess the football, gain some yardage, and put the onus on the defense. Do they have to use timeouts? What are they going to do to stop you? You're taking charge. It'll be a pickup of a couple, and it leaves them with a third and three. Right there. Vision is so important for the man in the middle because his ability to, to, to look through all the clutter that's happening in front of him, diagnose a play, and then go make it and finish it, that's when the great ones know that they have the goods. Man, I got you, I got you, I got you, I got you. Third and short yardage, Prescott. Cooper's got it. And they're able to get this one past the 30 down to the 25. 11 yards and a Cowboy first down. He's been the go-to guy. They needed a big play there on third down. Went his way. It worked out. Doesn't matter whether they've scouted it or that they think he's going to get the ball. He has a knack for finding his way open and completing the connection. Prescott looks to throw on first. This to Jarwin. And taking it to the 15-yard line before he's brought down. Give him 10 there. Good enough for a Cowboy first down. And looking to put this game on ice in the fourth quarter, but still not afraid to throw it as they show there. You want to play the game with confidence, and they have a guy who's in control right now. Their trigger guy throwing it, they feel just as confident with him doing that as they would if they tried to run the ball and run the clock out. Come on, baby. Let's go. Not totally home free yet, but it's looking good as they come up first and 10. Prescott from the gun. Completes it to Jason Witten. And stopped a few yards shy of the goal line at the three. 11 more yards that go around, a first down as well. I'd have to say they're feeling like they are in rhythm right now. Things are in sync, aren't they? Team's winning, got a nice little margin on the scoreboard. Completing some passes, and they just completed another one for a first down there to the tight end. They'll try to run it in with Elliott, and he will take it in for a Cowboy score. A three-yard touchdown run. And the Cowboys, they push out in front further. I know the play ends up in the end zone with one person carrying the ball, but how about that big mass of humanity that guided him to that spot? Yeah, they got there, but I love the dive. Always a fan of the dive. The extra point by Marr, up and good. And the lead is now 24.
Following the touchdown, here's Marr to kick it away. That's fielded in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. The Bills offense coming out, ready to take over. They've lost this one. Their offense has struggled. Do they try to put together something here at the end just to take into next week? Yeah, sometimes teams want to do that, and coaches want to. I remember one time I was on a team, and we were losing late in the game like this, and you knew it was lost. It was over, right? And the coach called a running play and pretty much said to everyone, I want to see something executed well before we get out of here. And that was the message to the team. Just something to build Just on. Just something to build on, get it done, and maybe we can look at that and say, we'll get better as we go forward. An incomplete pass leads to second and 10 from the 25. Throwing again, Allen. And that one got tipped, kind of threw everything off. It brings up third. Uh, defensively, you look at the numbers. Another incomplete pass that we just saw, and they're under 200 yards passing for the game, so they've done their job on that side of the ball. Yeah, recently I was actually working a game where a quarterback had a streak of five straight games without a 200-yard game, and that was a big talk, both in his town and amongst his team. How do we get the passing game going? So big credit to them holding them under 200 today. And now the third down throw incomplete as well. Trying to defend the out route there, got the P.I. call. And you know what's difficult about that one is sometimes you want to make the undercut move and go for the football, and other times just want to hang on the upfield shoulder and make the tackle. I think he got My caught man. in between and created a foul. You don't know no better. Here's Allen on first and ten. Man open, that's Robert Foster complete. 15 yards that time, and a Buffalo first. Defensively here, you've got the cushion, but back-to-back -back pretty big pass plays there. Bend but don't break, but are they bending too much? I think that they are. To me, it'd be like playing basketball, and you put up a token right press. Make sure you get up there and make them eat up some time. Make it a little bit of resistance so they can't just run it right down your throat. Here's Allen to throw it. Then he finds Beasley complete. And he'll get it inside the 40 to the 39. Five yards on the catch there, brings up second down. You got the big lead defensively, willing to give them that underneath stuff, right? And this is why you work on your tackling. Tackle them after the catch, inbounds, keep the clock running. Just go ahead and bleed the game out that way. Now the Bills are going to use the first of their timeouts as they'll stop it with a little over 30 ticks to go in the football game. Second down, Allen got a man, it's Brown. And he'll cross over out of bounds right at the 25. 14 yards and the Bills will get a new set of downs. Offense for them has been at a premium. You wonder where plays like that have been all game long. They're thinking the exact same thing themselves, but they're also looking forward now because now these plays are really for next week, trying to get some momentum going. Allen now on first down. And he is into the end zone for a Buffalo touchdown. 25 yards for the touchdown. And the Bills cut into that lead. And yeah, that touchdown counts for their team. But I think it counts more for the fantasy guys, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, it's just something maybe positive to look at on film. But this one's over, let's be honest. Yeah, I, I agree with you totally on that one. They'll try and run it with Gore. And he was able to shed the tackle, but the reserves come in for the stop. So the defense gets the stop. I know it's situation to situation, but who has more pressure there, offense or defense, when they go for two? I, st I truly believe it's the defense has more pressure because the offense has an entire playbook wide open from the two-yard line. You can run it. You can throw it. So defensively, I think most teams are going to be aggressive and force the issue and try and bring pressure.
Hauschka now to send this one away following the score. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And he'll be brought down at the 23, make it the 24-yard line. The offense for the Cowboys now working their way back onto the field. They have the dream scenario you hope for coming into the game. Just one kneel here, and this game should be over. And it's always the final play of preparation each week. The practicing of the kneel down formation, the victory formation. We've got a game in hand, and that's all they're going to want to do now. They'll put someone back deep just in case something goes haywire. But all in all, take the snap, kneel down, and, and shake hands. Yes, get out of there. And Charles, I think when the schedule comes out, all teams, no matter where they're predicted to finish, talk about protecting your home turf. They were able to do that here in this one. Similar to a tennis match, right? Not letting them break your serve. That way you hold on to it. They got it done, and they feel very good about that victory. So that'll just about do it for Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. For more, log on to easports.com. It's a win for the Cowboys as we sign off and say so long from Arlington.